getting worse, not being able to find things is horrible. Oh, sure, I've got it somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. I was reading it the other day. I've got it, that's it. Now, Paul Duchayu, his travels, wonderful book. And here is an extraordinary picture, 1861 published. This is the first illustration of a gorilla. This man found the gorilla and uh, come to that, the forest elephant and the pygmies. And he was the first man to see people eating each other cannibals. Everybody at the time doubted him. No one believed him really. Uh, but as we now know, absolutely everything that he said is true. <sighs> and that's, that's not a hammock. It's my underpants. Oh, and the hero of the week, Paul Duchamp. I was born in the wrong century. That's what my friends tell me, and I'm afraid they're right. I should have lived in the 19th century, when most of the world still had to be discovered. I should have been one of those brave men who left the safety and warmth of their homes to explore the blank areas on the globe, those places where no white man had ever set foot. Without those men, the world would not be as it is today. I can hardly believe it, but it's true. Here I am in Africa with the film crew in the city of Libreville, the capital of Gabon. This is where, more than 160 years ago, Paul Duchayou spent his youth. His father was a French merchant who ran a trading post here. That's where the young Paul, for the first time, heard the stories of a giant ape living in the dense forest of the interior. It fascinated him. Of course it fascinated him. In 1855, he decided to go and look for himself. Can you believe it? He was 24 years old, with no idea what to expect, no maps, no roads, nothing. I would have given everything to be able to go back in time back to that 19th century and join him. Paul Dushayu was the very first white man to explore this unknown jungle. Month after month, he waded through dangerous waters, shivered from fevers and was bitten by mosquitoes and taxi flies and aggressive ants and almost poisonous snakes. In the villages where he slept, they had never seen a white man before. So now it's our turn for our expedition and we need to go well prepared. What's the next appointment? I think one should always go to a fetish show. This is this is the land of animism and the fetish, and we need to have our expedition blessed, and we will get a feel for what's going to happen to us. A fetisher um, is like, uh, well, like a psychiatrist, really, but not 
never malign. Not like as a sorcerer, you can go to a sorcerer, much more expensive, but he will kill people for you. Uh, it's much more dangerous. Fairly sure you go with family problems, with your own problems. Monsieur de Fetisher? Vous êtes là? Monsieur le Fetisher? Vous êtes là? Hein? Ah, bonjour. La route, c'est ici, hein? Oui, c'est ici, oui. Hein? Oui? Ah. Ici. Faut oublier les pantalons. Monter les pantalons? Ah oui. Ouais. Vous venez ah. Ah. Ouais. Bonjour. Ouais, bonjour. Bonne arrivée. Ah. Quel heure? Oui. <rire> Uh, Hervé, wonderful. Hervé Soumna, <laughs> Assosa. Uh, voilà. Great. Voilà. OK. Ça marche. C'est bon? C'est bon. Voilà. <laughs> Je vous remercie. Voilà. Uh, uh, J'ai un, un, une question pour, pour vous. Oui? Uh, nous nous voyagerons à uh, la forêt profonde et j'ai besoin de... Protection fétiche, peut-être Oui. Oui, oui c'est possible. Oui, c'est possible. Ah, bon. Il y en a. Bon. On le fait. On fait des protections contre ah. les mauvaises choses, les mauvais sorts. Euh, oui. Tout, tout. C'est par là, la route. Jusqu'à Tsango. Le village Tsango. Ah. Voilà, la bonne nouvelle. On peut euh, euh, rouler avec ça. Ah, hein? ah bon Oui, c'est comme ça. Stupide. Ah. 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 Oui. 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 Ah. Et les chaussures. Quand je ai au... de la forêt. Oui, de, de, au niveau oui. de la forêt. Oui. Il faut que vous soyez bien protégé. Oui. Hein, bien protégé ah, contre, les, contre les mauvais sorts. Oui. Contre les, les, les bêtes féroces. Parce qu'il y a des bêtes qui facilement peuvent venir t'agresser. Alors que quand vous êtes blindé, vous êtes protégé, oui. tout de suite la bête vient même jouer avec oui. toi. Et c'est possible de jouer avec les... Non. Oui, avec les gorilles, oui. Oui, oui c'est possible. C'est la puissance du, du Tout-Puissant. Euh, je travaille avec le Seigneur, la force de, de Dieu. Ah oui. Même au niveau de la forêt, c'est Dieu lui-même qui a créé la forêt. Hum. C'est lui-même qui a créé les bêtes de bousse. C'était oui, un enfant de vous. Les pensées, voilà, aussi. voilà, les pensées, tout ça là. Wakaye. Boaké Oi Oi À la bassé À la bassé 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 Voilà, très bien <rire> Comme ça Ouais. Voilà. Mettez un pied là-bas. Oui. Voilà. Vous vous asseyez. Le, le, le feu au milieu. Les pieds. Voilà It feels well fumigated. It feels wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I still hesitate. So in a way, you believe in it. Eh? Um, the subconscious loves it. Yeah, 
So half of you will believe in it, however rational and uh, however much of an atheist you are. I felt like a blackbird getting the parasites out of its wings. What's going to happen next? Any idea? I think he's going to take some of my hair and fingernails and turn it into a fetish of some sort. Quand tu as fait l'amour avec la femme, oui. tu ne touches pas. Uh -huh. Tu ne touches pas à ta protection. Donc je veux faire en sorte que ça peut sortir et puis tu peux remettre. Tu vois, non oui. Donc quand tu sais que tu fais l'amour, ou bien quand tu veux te laver, tu laisses ça à côté. Uh -huh. Voilà. Quand tu as fait l'amour, tu te laves d'abord avant de toucher. Tu te laves d'abord. Hein avant de toucher la protection. Tu as compris, non Je uh, voilà. comprends. Voilà. Uh, you know, ton nom, c'est Redmond. Redmond. So now, with the protection of the fetisher, nothing can stop us from traveling deep into the dark forest of Gabon. Although, before we leave, I have to admit one thing. I already owned a fetish, made for me in 1989 by a sorcerer during my journey in the Congo. I don't believe a word of it, of course, but somehow I carry it with me everywhere I go. Here it is, that's it. Now, he said to me, took it back and he said, Mr. O'Hanlon, this is a fetish for your protection only. Your best friends may look at it. The men you hunt with may touch it. This fetish contains a child's finger to keep your thoughts fresh and your heart from becoming sad. Now, it sounds bad, and it is bad, of course, but if you have 10 children, you can be sure that all but three will die, and you have to give a child to the sorcerer, and he takes the fingers and so on. So you, and you makes really think there's a, after them. But if you think about it... You really think there's a child's finger inside? Well, it's, it was x-rayed. In fact, it was, well, it was x-rayed at, uh, at Heathrow, and there happened to be a Bantu woman behind the uh, thing, and she screamed, so... And showed me, yeah. Well, it could be a monkey finger, but I'm sure it is a child's finger. But, uh, well, we'll discover that world as we go. It's entirely natural that you should take a child's fingers and use them for something when the child has died. As soon as Dushayu left the capital, the dense jungle started. With every step he took, he entered deeper into a different world. A world full of sorcery, witchcraft, superstition, and that other practice visitors at his father's trading post had told him about. Men eating other men. Ah, here we go. Listen how he describes his first meeting with cannibalism. Here, on page 145. The next morning we moved off to the Fan village, and now I had the opportunity to satisfy myself as to a matter I cherished some doubt on before, namely, the cannibal practices of these people. I was satisfied, but too soon. As we entered the town, I perceived some bloody remains which looked to me to be human, but I passed on, still incredulous. Presently, we passed a woman who solved all doubt. She bore with her a piece of the thigh of a human body, just as we should go to market and carry thence a roast or steak. The whole village was much excited, and the women and children greatly scared at my presence all fled into the houses as we passed through what appeared to be the main street, a long lane, in which I saw, here and there, human bones lying about. 
At last we arrived at the Palava house. Here we were left alone for a while, though we heard great shoutings going on at a little distance. I was told by one of them afterwards that they had been busy dividing the body of a dead man and that there was not enough for all. So yes, although Dushayu couldn't believe his eyes, it was true. Here amongst the Fan, a tribe of fierce and ruthless warriors deep in the interior, cannibalism was daily routine. Here in 1855, no one had ever seen a white man before. No wonder the fan thought that Dushayu, with his fair skin, was a spirit, a creature from another world. Here in this little fang town, we're going to see if there is anything left from those days. Come in, I'll show you my room. It's not at all bad. Um, but just two bits of advice I've got for anybody traveling here. Um, always remember, when you put your head on this pillowcase, uh, pillowcase, that you are sleeping with everybody who ever slept with that pillowcase. This, yeah, it's ripe. Now, another thing you must never ever do, it's raising your mattress, curiosity, see what's underneath them. Uh, last time I did that, when I was in the equatorial belt, uh, these magnificent big, big cockroaches just poured out. They came over the edge of the bed like water over Niagara Falls and then <laughs> dispersed all over the floor. Um, this is wonderful. This chief that he really likes called Romanji comes to see him. And he brought me two dozen fowls and some bunches of plantains and baskets of cassava, which being laid at my feet, he addressed me saying, and his dialogue is good and his details are good. Huh? Be glad, O spirit, and eat of the things we give thee. Whereupon, to my astonishment, a slave was handed over to me bound. And Romanji said, kill him for your evening meal. He is tender and fat and you must be hungry. It took me a moment to recover from my astonishment. Then I shook my head, spat violently on the ground and made Mincho tell them that I abhorred the people who ate human flesh and that I and my people never did so. To which Romanji replied, we always heard that you white men eat men. Why do you buy our people? Why do you come from nobody knows where and carry off our men and women and children? Do you not fatten them in your far country and eat them? Therefore I gave you this slave that you might kill him and make glad your heart. It's great. <laughs> People love that, of course, in those days, because you wrote book after book, didn't you? Yes, well, these two, these two volumes, um, well, made his name, but also made his fortune. They, they were fantastic um, bestsellers. But you have to remember in context, no television, no radio, um, well, of course, no computers, no nothing, no, no, no real entertainment. So travel book, this was the one way of getting to know about the world, and terribly exciting, um, gorillas and chimpanzees and all sorts of... Um, Marvellous animals that you couldn't have imagined are so exotic. His adventures made him an extremely popular guest in the salons of London, Paris, and New York, where a breathless audience was spellbound by his horrible stories of sorcery and cannibalism in the forest. And of course, some people just didn't believe him. So Dushayu asked a friend, the Reverend Walker, to confirm that everything he wrote about cannibal practices was true. This is the old American mission post where Dushayu and Walker sat for hours. It's a miracle that it's still here, but it seems to be the right place to meet Guy Rosatonga. They say he knows everything about Dushayu. 
And are there walkers buried here too? The, the one that he, yes, he asked yes. his friend. There was a lot of a lot of missionary call walkers yeah, here, yeah. and one of them was one of the chief of this mission. He's just Walker. been he's just been talking about mm -hmm. his shock and his first lot of stories about uh, Fan and the cannibals, uh, and he says these stories seem so incredible, and even the fact that these people actually buy and eat the corpses of their neighbours, resting as it does upon my statement alone, has excited so much evident disbelief among friends in this country, to whom I have mentioned this custom, that I am very glad to be able to avail myself of the concurrent testimony of a friend the Reverend Mr. Walker of the Gaboon Mission. And at some stage, uh, Dushayu mentions, um, somewhere near here, that, that the chief uh, one evening says, you're looking very hungry, and brings him a, a slave and says, uh, you need some meat. Yes. It, it, that, that's it, extraordinary. It, it, what? it wasn't exactly that. Oh, OK. Uh, you know, in our conscious conception of life, yeah. the white people are not human beings. Yes. There are spirit. And in our conception also, spirit don't eat food like us. Spirit uh -huh. eat human being. So while the fan in those days thought the white men preferred black slaves for their meal. In the fan village we spend the night, the cook only wants to serve us eggs for breakfast. When Dushayu was here, he refused to eat from their cooking pots, since he feared they might have been used to prepare human meat. Avant, avant, les femmes mangeaient, euh, mangeaient les, les autres ethnies, mais après, les Allemands ont dit, non, faut plus manger. Please, the villagers ask us, don't take the man in the striped shirt too seriously. He's the former schoolmaster, and he's not really crazy. But his head is poisoned with too much knowledge. Oui. Somewhere in the villages here, we hope to find an old man who can tell us more about cannibalism. I feel a bit uncomfortable walking along. I can't help thinking, when did they stop eating each other? What do you think? Did he swallow human meat when he was young? Or did he? Why not? I mean, it's only three generations ago. It's very possible that his grandfather met Dushayu. They talk for hours and examine one illustration after the other in the book. But no, their grandparents never told them about any man eating. Maybe, they say, Dushayu just saw the skulls of their forefathers lying around the huts. It's an old custom with the fan to store the remains of their dead relatives in the backyard. Or so they say. Eating the bodies of persons who have died of sickness is a form of cannibalism of which I had never heard among any people, so that I determined to inquire if it were indeed a general custom among the funds, or merely an exceptional freak. They spoke without embarrassment about the whole matter, and I was informed that they constantly buy the dead of the Ashiba tribe 
who in return buy theirs. They also buy the dead of other families in their own tribes, and besides this, get the bodies of a great many slaves from the Mibichus and Modembas, for which they readily give ivory, at the rate of a small tusk for a body. That's a lot of money. Don't forget, it's more than 160 years ago that Du Shayu was here. So the chance to find any proof of his visit is, due to the extreme tropical climate, very slim. But that day, God, or the sorcerer, is on our side. Wow. That's a real musket. Yeah? Fantastic. Probably made in Birmingham, a trade gun. Exactly as Dushayu describes this. Um, you put the powder in, tapped it down with this, and then uh, he says that they, it was amazing they didn't explode because the fan put uh, three times the charge, sometimes five times the charge they should, exactly. in there. Yeah, the, the, the powder. And then banged in any old bits of iron that they got from the forge, nails, anything, um, right up to the top. And when they fired, there was an incredible explosion. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> oh, boy. Aha. Oui. Ça, c'est pour les hommes, hein? Oui, c'est pour les hommes. Oui. Yeah, it's a man killer. On, on les jette comme ça? Oui. Got him! There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ah! No. The mash pas. Mais on dit l'explorateur. Il dit que dans ce temps, hein, il y a longtemps, mm -hmm. que les femmes, ils ont tué des hommes. Des hommes avec ça. Oui. Et après, et après ils l'ont mangé. Ah oui. Hein, elle, des, surtout les caca et les pigmes. Oui. Ah, got it. <laughs> I would have liked to have a father who was a warrior cannibal. I would have been so proud of him. But unfortunately, my father wasn't a cannibal. He was a vicar in the English countryside. And their fathers might have been cannibals, but they don't seem to be proud of it at all. The reputation of the fan as bloodthirsty warriors didn't do them any good in the long term. It seems they'd rather forget it as soon as possible. Um, again, there's wonderful, another great attraction of these books of Dushai is that the illustrations from his, uh, from his drawings or photographs are uh, are wonderfully dramatic. Now this is a fan chief. This is just cut from the back of an elephant, the hardest piece of leather. Uh, and these shields were a new, new invention. And here you can see these different points of these terrifying spears. It's all uh, new stuff. And here he is with his, with his leopard's teeth around his neck. Aha. Uh -huh. These are just one man's collection of spears. That's, that's, that's to really hold you. Can't get that out. Uh, they went into battle, uh, not over women or an argument or territory. They went into battle because they wanted meat. Now, that's a big motivation. And the poor people trying to defend themselves against them uh, must be absolutely terrifying. And after a time, their enemies would know that the fan took no prisoners. They, they were, or rather, they took prisoners as if they were cattle. So they took them back to their villages and kept them until they needed them. Uh, when they killed them um, and ate them. My new friend Rosatonga doesn't agree with me at all. The fan, he says, didn't eat human meat because they liked the taste of it. It's not a delicacy for them. 
They ate their opponents for a different reason. They hoped by eating the heart, they would obtain the power and the energy of their enemy. Lorsqu'il y avait des guerres, le chef qui gagne la guerre, s'il a réussi à capturer ou à tuer son ennemi, il va prendre le cœur de son ennemi et il le mange. Et ça lui fait plus fort. Voilà. OK, that makes sense. I mean, that made sense 160 years ago. And maybe that's what Dushayu spotted. But then, on the way back in the car, Rosa Tonga suddenly starts talking about today. Aujourd'hui, au Gabon, qu'est-ce qui se passe? On tue quelqu'un et on prélève certains de ses organes, le cœur, la langue, le sexe, à des fins fétichistes, à des fins de sorcellerie. Donc ce n'est pas exactement du cannibalisme. On ne mange pas quelqu'un par plaisir de manger de la chair humaine. Et d'ailleurs, euh, quand on est dans ce type de situation, on ne va pas manger la main, le pied, etc., euh, comme n'importe quel animal. Ce qu'on va manger, ce sont des parties spéciales du corps humain, des parties qui sont des lieux, des sièges du pouvoir, des sièges d'énergie, comme le cœur, comme la langue. La langue est une partie importante parce que ben, la preuve, c'est que je suis en train de vous parler. Ouais. Et si, par exemple, quelqu'un veut devenir un grand orateur, un grand avocat, il faut qu'il sache parler. Et il va parler en récupérant la langue de quelqu'un d'autre. Tous les jours, enfin, tous les jours, j'exagère. Ouais. Mais c'est un problème de société extrêmement important. C'est ce qu'on appelle les crimes rituels. At first, I don't believe Rossatonga. I can't imagine ritual killings in this friendly society. We decide to check it out. It takes only a few phone calls to find out that he didn't exaggerate at all. Almost every week, parents lose their children here by these cream rituels. I mean, now, today. In most cases, the mutilated bodies are dumped on the beach. À 8h30, c'est à la plage ici, à Libreville, que j'ai découvert mon enfant qui a été assassiné. Il a été enlevé à la sortie de l'école avec son ami musulman qui s'appelait Aboubakar Ibrahim. Ils étaient assassinés et les commanditaires sont venus jeter le corps ici. C'était ici Oui, c'est ici où j'avais trouvé mon petit frère. Ils ont mis la, 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 la seringue ici. Il y a une grosse veine là. De là, ils ont vidé le sang. Le sang, c'est comme ça qu'on a trouvé la mort. Et mon enfant n'a pas eu le nord. Si vous voyez des photos, c'est vraiment fou. Ils ont arraché, ils ont coupé la langue, ils ont coupé les lèvres, ils ont enlevé les yeux, ils ont coupé les oreilles, ils l'ont rasé, ils l'ont marchumé parce que le sens était sorti du calcif qu'il portait. Ils l'ont tiré, ils ont mis une seringue sous son pied pour tirer le sang. On a coupé la langue. On a enlevé les yeux, on a coupé le sexe pour aller féticher. Et on a enlevé le sang pour aller boire, parce qu'ils boivent le sang, ils mangent encore la chair humaine. Ça existe encore chez nous. On le mange Oui. Dans les crimes rituels, c'est souvent les jeunes qu'on prend. De... Un an à moins 20 ans. Et toujours les garçons Les garçons, même les femmes. Même les femmes. Mais ça dépend, ça dépend de ce que, ce que le commanditeur veut. S'il veut le sexe de la femme, il va commander le sexe de la femme. Parce que euh, ici, dans les, dans les crimes rituels, quand on parle de sexe de femme, quand, je vais prendre un exemple hein, que j'ai lu dans un, dans, dans, un, dans un passage, dans un, dans un livre, quand ils veulent utiliser les. les, les à dire, prendre le sexe des femmes, le clitoris, la femme surtout. Euh, ils, ils le font sécher et pour avoir le pouvoir 
de dominer le, 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 le monde, à dire avoir le, la parole devant les gens, ils prennent le clôturiste, là, ils mettent dans la bouche. Gabon, ça existe. On tue, on fait des fétiches, on mange. Pour avoir quoi Pour avoir l'argent, le pouvoir, le succès. Et ce sont les hautes personnalités qui font ça. Les gens aux grandes voitures, aux grandes maisons, vous regardez, un secrétaire de, de, du Sénat, je vous peux avoir une maison comme ça. C'est le pouvoir. I do need our new friend Rossatonga here. He's one of the main advisors of the president of Gabon. So he knows his way around the powerful people at the top, especially amongst politicians. Does that also happen more often during election time? Exactly. And uh, I, it will be parliamentary election in three or four months. And people began to see who have an eye to your children because politicians will be beginning to want to kill someone to take some part of the body. In the society, one of the men user of this kind of thing is politician. And it's difficult for Gabonese to think you can be a big man if you don't do this kind of thing. It's a really difficult. Mm. In the head of normal person, to be a, a great man, you got to pass by here. And it's really a problem. It's really a problem because all the society believe in it. Mm. So people are afraid of elections then? At least for the children. Sure, sure, sure. You, 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 you don't have to leave your children anywhere in this period because it's normally dangerous for them. But what about yourself? You're in politics. Did you? Uh... I'm sure some people believe I did it. Really? Uh, wow. Yes, yes. Because. In this country, but it's the same in Congo, it's the same in Cameroon, it's the same in Bantu world. You can't succeed if you are not a wage and so. So people, there, I could find people, if I go into the streets and I mention your name, I could find people who really think <laughs> he's a good talker, he talks well, he must have eaten many tongues of dead children. Perhaps, maybe. Maybe. C'était ici où on l'avait trouvé. Le corps dans l'herbe, les pieds. Donc fais justice. Je suis en train de demander, je prie tous les jours que Dieu fasse justice. Well, that was quite a day. Eh? Ah, well, I really shaken up. Well, I promise you, it never had occurred to me in all these years. One should expect it maybe to happen in the 19th century. Yes. Yes, but even uh, Dushayu never mentions body parts in, in fetishes or to do with ritual. I think that was too much for him. He could understand straight, straight eating and selling your dead people, your diseased people, and eating them. I mean, okay, why not, really? Uh, but, but to deliberately take people's children and do that to them, just to protect some big man, some powerful man with a, with a fetish, with a better speech because he's got to make a speech and he needs a young tongue to eat. And my God, it's. Uh, I knocked me out. I mean, terrible.
Being the son of a clergyman, I desperately try to avoid church visits. But look at me now. Somebody gave me this seat at the front row of what promises to be a three-hour-long service. And yes, escape is not an option. C'est pour cette raison, chers frères et sœurs, que nous sommes ici. C'est notre situation. C'est notre situation. Pourquoi Parce que nous avons dans nos maisons des gens qui ne nous aiment pas, les parents qui ne nous aiment pas. Pourquoi Parce que nous voulons nous débrouiller et les gens ne veulent pas les gens que l'autre qui se débrouille. Et quand ils n'aiment pas les gens qui se débrouillent, qu'est-ce qu'ils font Ils passent par la sorcellerie. Ils passent par les vampires et ils boivent du sang, du sang humain. Amen. Amen. Ils boivent du sang humain. Et il y en a qui peuvent se dire, ah, c'est des choses qui ne se font jamais, qui ne se font jamais. Alors, il faut dire à ces gens-là que ces choses existent véritablement ici en Afrique. Raison pour laquelle nous sommes ici. Amen. We're here to witness an exorcist service. The missionaries succeeded in stopping the old-fashioned cannibalism, but they couldn't make an end to the widespread belief in spirits and witchcraft. So today, Abbe Jean Arsène Obama still fights a round-the-clock competition battle with fetishers and sorcerers. Dans toute pratique occulte, il y a nécessairement l'addition avec les os, les ossements. C'est-à-dire que on ne peut pas guérir. Tu ne peux pas aller chez le guérisseur parce que tel ou tel problème, parce que la potion qu'il va vous donner, c'est toujours un mélange avec les ossements de quelqu'un qui est déjà mort. Hein? <rire> Forcément. Donc, c'est pourquoi on interdit aux gens d'aller vers les fétiches. Parce que les fétiches, c'est toujours à derrière-plan, donc toujours en dessous, hein, le, 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 la relation, le lien avec les, 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 pu les puissances mystiques. J'ai un ami qui a un fétiche. Il pense qu'il y a un petit morceau d'un doigt d'un enfant dedans. C'est possible Mais Bien sûr. Bien sûr, c'est ce tout ce que je te dis là. Il y a les crânes, il y a les ossements, il y a tout. Et c'est dang dangereux d'avoir quelque tout chose comme ça. Tout est dangereux. Tous ces gens-là mangent les, les sexes des gens, les sexes des femmes, les sexes des hommes, des, des, des machins et tout ça. Ici, ça, 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 ils mangent. Ils mangent les clitoris, des femmes, des machins et tout ça. Ils découpent et ils mangent. Parce qu'ils pensent que ça donne de l'énergie, n'est-ce pas? <rire> Mais oui, l'énergie, bien sûr, diabolique. J'ai compris qu'en 89, ils ont encore mangé un homme ici. Oui. En 89. D'ailleurs, ça tombe bien parce que c'était mon, mon professeur d'anglais. Votre professeur d'anglais Oui, c'est mon qui professeur d'anglais qui était mangé. Bien sûr, on l'a mangé dans le concombre. Puis, ah. eh, oui. Dans le concombre hein? Mais oui, le concombre, on l'a mangé. Et puis, c'était un monsieur euh, qui était d'ailleurs enfermé là, qui était enfermé. Euh, il s'appelait un baldem. Mm -hmm. Et puis, voilà. On l'a mangé, on l'a mangé. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il a fait Il l'a tué d'abord Il était déjà. On l'a tué d'abord on l'a tué et puis on a préparé, on a découpé un petit morceau. Et ils ont mangé dans le comprendre. C'est tout. C'était un rite, un rituel. Euh, que, je ne sais pas. En tout cas, ça, ça existe. Il y a des gens qui... Si moi, je suis contre toi, si, 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 moi, je ne t'aime pas. Mm -hmm. Mais je prends la, viande, la, la chair humaine, je te mets dans la nourriture. Quand tu manges, c'est fini. Une fois que tu manges la chair humaine, c'est fini. La chair humaine ne colle pas dans le ventre. Ah, le ça ne sort pas. Oui, j'ai toujours compris que ça goûte. Une fois c'est dedans, c'est dedans. Tu es parti.
I find it hard to see any difference between my fetisher and these servants of Christianity. On both sides, the surrounding folklore is as colorful as it is entertaining. No wonder the Gabonese choose a bit of both. After all, a man should believe what he wants to believe. For someone who hates religion, you're quite a believer, if I see what you take. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> I mean, all the medicine and the fetish and all these little pills of which you hardly know. What which are no, a kind of fetish. I just got to really like pills. <laughs> um, yeah, but that, I think it's just how the human mind works. It's no, uh, tells us nothing whatever about how the external world actually works. It tells us quite a lot about how we've evolved and how our subconscious works. Mm. But what do you mean by, uh, I just happen to like pills? Um, well, I always have. They're as if they're, uh, you know, a friend you can talk to and be with early in the morning, and then, then you can later on you can sleep at night, rather than sleeping all day long. For instance, I mean, I like the idea that you can direct life with, uh, well, chemicals. But it seems that you're taking them with random. You just take one. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> um, no. No, they all have a purpose. It's just I've forgotten what a lot of them are. <laughs> yeah. I almost forgot the real purpose of our visit. Or maybe I should say my real purpose. I mean, I do like people and their strange habits. But to be honest, I'm equally interested in animals. this region, this is his bed, he comes up really annoyed, it's my territory, some other guy trying to grab my women, and then you shoot, and it's all right, they're very common, and the venison is wonderful. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If so, you can watch the next episode here. Or check another recommended series on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new series.